All right, welcome to this video. This is going to be a second part in electric fields, and we're going to expand upon what we talked about in the last video. In the last video, I'm just defining what an electric field was. An electric field is the force that a um, one coulomb test charge would experience in a region of space, and so it's basically it's it's force per unit charge here. That's the definition of it. So it's not a force but it's saying if there was a one coulomb charge in space what force would it experience if there was a charge if there was a charge okay so what do we need to create an electric field we need only one charge one charge can create a field just by that charge existing in space it creates a field so just by existing this is going to affect the surrounding environment just because it exists same thing's true with mass right when we have mass we have a field that would go in. So the same thing is true with a mass. I drew a mass here. With a mass, the field is always going to be in, uh, but with a charge, the field could be in or out depending on the charge. So just by existing, right, a charge or a mass affects the surroundings by creating a field. So just the fact that this exists, it's going to create a field. Just the fact that a mass exists, it's going to create a gravitational field going in towards it. Okay. And then what are the units of electric field? We said that it's force per unit charge or newtons per coulomb or volts per meter. And this is going to give us a gradient, okay, or a slope and how fast the voltage is changing. So this is going to be a gradient. And we're going to talk about that later because as we make analogies to, um, you know, I'm going to make an analogy to field and voltage to geography, uh, that's going to become important. So. Anyway, the next question here that I'm going to address here is what is the magnitude of an electric field at a given point? How do we know how strong it is at a given point? So for example, um, let's just say I have a field here and um, there's a field and let's say there's a charge here and this charge is creating a field and um, you know there's, there's a field and it's emanating out away from this charge here like this. And I'm going to explain to you how to define these directions in a minute, but I'm just going to go into the concept of a magnitude first here. So let's just say that I want to say, okay, right there, how strong is the field, right? So the definition for that at this point is basically going to be that the field, the definition, the strength of the field is basically of a point charge, which is what we have here. This is a point charge, by the way. This is a point charge. point charge means we're treating it as if all of the, the charge was concentrated at one point. Um, so at, if we're far away from this object, if we're outside of the surface, it doesn't matter if it's a sphere or not, if it's, if it's an infinitely small or if it's just a solid sphere. As long as we're outside, it's going to behave as if it's concentrated in the middle and it's, that's a uniform density of the object. So this point charge, so basically the field of a point charge is going to be um, K, which is Coulomb's constant, Q, which is the magnitude of the charge, over R squared. And that basically, what does that mean? Well, this is a constant. This is a constant here. Coulomb's constant, okay? And this is just going to be 9 times 10 to the 9. This is the charge. And this is the radius. And we say radius because a lot of times we may be getting centripetal uh, forces. It may be going in a circle around something. So we use the concept of radius when we're talking about that. Um, we might have orbits and whatnot, especially when we, when we get into magnetism, right? These charges like to spin around in circles when they're flying at a crossed component of the electric field. Okay, so I've got my, my charge here. So what does that mean? That means that E is proportional to 1 over R squared. That's really what we should take about this. This is important. So as we get further away, the strength is going to be proportional to 1 over R squared. It's also going to be proportional to the Q. I mean, if I increase the Q, you know, the field's going to get stronger, obviously. If I get a bigger charge, it's going to get stronger. But the most important thing here that we want to take away from this is that E is proportional to 1 over R squared. So if I had a graph here, really quickly here, and I had E versus R, Basically, what's going to happen is as I get closer and closer to that um, 
charge, if as the radius approaches zero, right, as I get closer to that charge, the field is going to spike up here. And that's what we're going to have. So it's it's important to understand that, that the field is changing. Uh, depending upon how far away you are. Okay, so this is kind of an important thing here. It's not constant when we're talking about a point charge. It's changing. As I get away, it's changing. And it's changing very rapidly. So since since we ha since we know that this guy here, this field here, okay, is not constant as a function of radius, right? That eliminates a lot of options that we have in terms of tools that we've used up to this point. In other words, we cannot use kinematics. Therefore, we have no kinematics. We cannot use kinematics with this. And I'm going to explain later. There are some small exceptions we can make if we're talking about a very small region of space where we approximate it to be constant. Um, like gravitational field on Earth, we say it's 9.8 and we use it as a constant, but we're talking about a very small region. But basically we can't use kinematics. So we're going to have to reach into our bag of tricks and use other ways. If we're doing calculus, we can integrate things and you know figure out, uh, or we can, we can also use energy. Okay. So I just wanted to talk about that. So this is the concept of a field. So the magnitude of a field is going to be determined by the charge in 1 over r squared. So as I get closer to this, um, as I get closer to this charge, um, the the strength of the field is going to spike up like that. Okay, that's important. And I talked about the magnitude first here, but we, I want to talk about now the direction. The direction. So how do you know the direction of a field? And sometimes you know people will talk about the direction first, but I really wanted to talk about the magnitude first, um, simply because this concept is important, and we'll we'll determine the directions next because directions are going to give us the, um, the the vector component of this, right? Because this electric field is this is a vector, okay? So very important stuff here. This is a very challenging topic, okay? This is a vector. So what does a vector have? Well, it has a magnitude, and now we're going to talk about the direction, okay? So a vector has a magnitude and a direction, right? We know that. Direction. Okay. So let's let's determine now um, what what is the direction of the field? How do we do that? Let's let's figure that out next.